Now, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but when we look at conservation, we think about how much of the energy is transferred usefully to where we want it to be. So sometimes we have wasted energy, which is dissipated to the surroundings. So that means it spreads out, it can't be usefully recovered, and it often increases the thermal store of the surroundings. So um, the efficiency, we can either give it as a percentage, as a decimal, and I suppose you could give it as a fraction as well. So for the first one, I just worked out what was the output, what was the input, and then I gave my answer both as a percentage or a decimal. Um, and then we looked a little bit at electric heaters. Now these are actually really efficient because normally the wasted energy increases the thermal store of the surroundings, which is exactly what we want to do with an electric heater. So maybe even if the wires are getting hot, if there's some wasted sound, that's all going to be adding to the overall efficiency of that device. We then had a look at thermal conductivity, which is basically a measure of the rate of heat transfer through the material. You've got great conductors like metals and then bad conductors, or also known as good insulators, which don't allow heat transfer very quickly through them, things like glass and plastic. Um, now this one here is going to be an ultra, ultra bouncy ball, really high efficiency, it's 90% efficient. And for this one over here, um, effectively after one bounce, it still has 90% of the energy, but then we then have to take this new value, multiply it by 0.9 again, which is our 90%, to find that after two bounces it would go to 9.72. We then take this value again, multiply it by another 0 0.9 to find this 8.75. And for this one here, you can see the pattern. Every time it bounces, we're multiplying by 0 0.9. So after six bounces, that's the same as 0 0.9 raised the power of 6 to give 6.38 meters. This is an impossibly bouncy ball. Um, the next one, we're looking at the rocket engines, uh, maybe on a, a rocket going out into space. Um, and what I'm saying here is that the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy are the useful outputs. And because everything is in kilojoules, and we're just looking at the ratio, you can leave both of these numbers in kilojoules rather than converting to joules. So it's the ratio of these two things. So it's 40% efficient, that increases to 44% efficiency, which would then give a value of 74.8 kilojoules. Um, and I've left this to three significant figures, like the values over here. And then the final one is maybe looking at the ratio of powers um, to look at the efficiency. And I've just rearranged the equation to say that the power input equals the power output divided by the efficiency. So this means that effectively the power input was 12 kilowatts and we got 8.7 kilowatts out. But then the next one, we're get, now going to use the efficiency of 0 0.63. The power input, because it's 25% more efficient, that's why I multiplied by 1.25, so it's 25% greater. And this then gave a value of 9.4 kilowatts. So this one over here, um, even though there's an increased in the power input, this actually decreases the efficiency. So the actual output isn't much bigger than the 8.7 that we had for part A. So that one over there, uh, just some quick questions looking at energy conservation and efficiency.